we are off and running in the West Coast Conference, and the number 22 Gonzaga Bulldogs are off to a hot start. After knocking off BYU tonight, they're back in the kennel for a game with some uh, genuine upset potential as they get ready to play a team that nearly beat second place Portland on Saturday, the San Diego Toreros. It is so great to see you again with Amanda Smith here courtside in the kennel. I'm Greg Talbot. Well, after her sister went down with a foot injury a couple weeks ago, Kaylin Trong has turned into an absolute superstar for the Zags. She had 24, a career high, on Saturday in the rivalry game against BYU. Amanda, she's done everything they've asked of her and more. She's been a superstar, Greg. Sure. Okay, a casual 24 points career high against BYU, a game that we talk so much about being important for Gonzaga with the players that they've been missing and really just getting into a rhythm and flow. But I think it's so special to have a player like Kaylin Trong that you can rely on to knock down three-point shots. She can pull up, but most importantly to me, create for herself off the dribble. San Diego, meanwhile, does not have one superstar like Kaylin Trong for the Zags who can carry the load, but they do have a lot of depth and balance, and that's why they're able to come within striking distance of Portland on Saturday. Yeah, nine players for the Toreros, averaging 12 minutes a game. So like you said, what that tells up tells us is that they have depth on this team. What's most impressive to me maybe though is their defense. Holding teams to just 61 points per game, five and two in the games when they do that. So I think for Gonzaga, it's gonna be really important for them to get out, push the basketball, run, score in transition, and then if that's not there, hit the shots from the perimeter. So we are into conference play and every game matters now. We'll see what USD has up their sleeve tonight. It's the number 22 Zags and the Toreros coming up next on the WCC Network on Stadium. Back inside the McCarthy, Athle McCarthy Athletic Center. Let's get ready for tonight's starting lineups. First of all, with the San Diego Toreros, this is a group, Amanda, where they have pretty much the same starting five most of the year. Kiera Oakery really the one to watch in terms of scoring. Yeah, the team's leading scorer, but we talked about earlier the fact that they can go to their bench if needed, so Gonzaga defensively has to be very aware of individually where every player on this team is. As for the Zags, Kaylee Trong still out. Kaylin Trong therefore running the point. Brenna Maxwell is really filled in well at shooting guard. She is someone who is consistent with Kaylin Trong, with Yvonne Ejim. You know, I just think that during this period of time, this group has really shown that they can be consistent when inconsistencies present themselves. These two teams at the beginning of the season not picked unanimously near the top of the conference. The Zags were not San Diego, but 
boy, a lot of people have a lot more respect for them now after what they nearly did to Portland two days ago down in the Child Center. And San Diego takes the opening tip. And away we go tonight in Spokane. By the way, that's Casey Newbert who just had the ball a moment ago. She is wearing number 40 tonight instead of her normal number 22 for USD for those fans watching who might be a little confused as Maya Pace puts that one down and gets the Toreros on the board first. Beautiful cut from the opposite side from Pace. We talked about Kira Oakry being a scorer for this team, but Maya Pace, someone that you also have to be aware of where she is on the court because that creating for yourself away from the basketball is so special. Well, there she is on defense too and such a phenomenal player, fifth and all-time record books at USD in steals as the shot won't go from Yvonne Ejim. And a second opportunity here for Maxwell. Now Trong and the Zags on the offensive end. Love seeing Gonzaga crash the boards on the offensive end early because that's something that San Diego does very well. Mm. Here comes Maxwell from outside the three-point line. She's third in the country in three-point shooting this year. Came up a little bit short there. I appreciate a player, though, who, with the shot clock winding down, is not afraid to go one-on-one. -on -one. No question. Here comes Williams on the rebound. All right, so the Zags coming off that nine-point win against BYU back here on Saturday as Hollingsworth works it around the key. Did the Zags acquit themselves well in that game, Amanda? <laughs> Wait. This is going to be a vocabulary lesson. What is a quit? Did they? There's <laughs> Strong Wait, with the layup. Let's not get into the dick. <laughs> Wait, I how did they? How did they perform? Did, 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 did they? Did they end up? Um, do <laughs> so a quit is like a jury trial. Like, did they get off? Is the question. Like, how, how did they perform? How'd they do? Well, I mean, like, we saw some of that. Sure. I'd like to see some more of that in sure. this game. Yeah. I was really impressed with what Gonzaga was able to do against BYU because that's a game, you know, we talked about the fact that BYU, they're not the same team that they have been in the past. But when you have a rivalry, it's almost like that just goes out the window and it's very, very competitive. So I still think with Gonzaga's numbers being down, this consistency that they're showing is incredibly impressive and I have to be honest I'm a little surprised that they're only just ranked at 22 based on their record based on what they've been able to do against opponents with players being down no question and then keep in mind with that number 22 ranking is Trong just comes up a little bit short on the three there again in case you have not been following this Gonzaga team this year they are 10 and 2 right now and those two losses were to Stanford and then Marquette some really incredible wins as well as there's Williams. Big wins against teams like Louisville and Tennessee. And that's huge to me. And I think that, you know, when you look at the collective, that ranking, and I know that the team is probably not like, oh, we're only ranked 22. But to me, it, it definitely should be higher based on record and performance. Sure. So that BYU game on Saturday was really surprising about that was just how spread out the rest of the scoring was when it wasn't Kaylin Trong. I believe only one other player was in double digits, and the starters had all but nine of their points. Really, it was a top-down performance on Saturday against the Cougars. As that one is rejected from behind, but a second chance is good from, from uh, Olinger. San Diego right now, I think, is looking to push the pace a little bit. If sure. you've noticed, it's, you know, rebound, outlet, let's run and try to score in transition. So the other thing I wanted to ask you, just briefly touching on that BYU game, is Ejim is there underneath. So crazy effort that night, right, on Saturday from Kalen and Brennan Maxwell. That gave them the win. Because those two put up such crazy performances, do we expect some different faces to step up today? Maybe it's a Hollingsworth and Ejim game? I think that that's the luxury of having the kind of depth almost that you can pull off of your bench in moments like this. So I would be a little surprised if we don't see another consistent game from Kaylin Trong. I think she's been so strong and really stepped up in a position that's not necessarily the one that she's used to playing in. To me, that is so impressive to be able to put up 24 points while you're facilitating the basketball because that's not your primary position no. where she's used to playing that off guard. So I think in this game against San Diego, it's going to be really competitive. They're a great defensive team. Obviously on their scouting report, they have all of these numbers. They know that these are Gonzaga's go-to players. So to me, 
yes, I think we will need to see others step up in moments where the defensive effort changes on, like from San Diego to Gonzaga's offense. Sure. All right, speaking of point guards and stuff happening on the floor, Kaylin Trong just got taken over to the bench, and she's working with the trainers on what looks like something to her elbow. So Peyton Muma is in to run point, at least momentarily, for the Zags, and here she is. Got a lot more playing time than she otherwise would have these last couple of weeks due to injuries, but she and Callie Stokes have really impressed. Ejim all the way to the 10 and rejected at the last minute. One dribble, up strong, but I just mentioned it. San Diego's defense, you know, they're holding opponents to 61 points per game. That's huge. You're going to have to maybe look for the outlet pass on those opportunities when their defense is collapsing on you. That was a good-looking three from Laura Eric, stripped the junior out of the Portland area. Plenty of gals, actually, on this Toreros team who are from the Pacific Northwest. Zags by three in the early going. Out to Destiny Burton, who's also gotten plenty of playing time that she wasn't necessarily expecting the last few weeks. Down to five to shoot for Brenna Maxwell. And there she goes, and she's off and running. That's a really, really tough shot with the shot clock winding down. But once again, knowing where it is and saying, like, okay, I'm going to take this one-on-one. -on -one. Notice, though, how San Diego's defense is really forcing Gonzaga's offense to play high. Sure. Uh, that was Veronica Sheffy, the 5'9 freshman guard from Washington. Like we said, a couple gals here from the Pacific Northwest. She's from Woodenville over on the west side of the state. To me right now, I'd like to see some more movement away from the basketball because, really, that's a great shot. Peyton Muma. <laughs> you were saying? Okay. okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. Right, Great shot from Go ahead, Peyton Mandy. Muma. But, oh, I have a nickname now. Sure. I would like to see some more movement away from the basketball because right now, San Diego, their defense is really in that moment. It is just proof that they're forcing Gonzaga to play high. Luckily for the Zags, they are far more comfortable playing on the perimeter than San Diego is. Gonzaga has the two best three-point shooters mm -hmm. in the West Coast Conference in Brenna Maxwell and silently Eliza Hollingsworth. San Diego, meanwhile, is dead last in the WCC in three-point shooting. And we'll get a three-point play here from Ivan Ejim. Right off the pass, cutting to the basket. I love, love, love that play because it forced San Diego's defense to make a decision. All right, so that'll take us down to our first media timeout of the game with the Zags doubling up San Diego in the early going. 16-8, to eight. we'll have Ivan Ejim on the other end of the free throw line after the break on the WCC Network on Stadium. Well, Yvonne Ejim has four of the Zags' first 16 points in this one against San Diego, up 16-8 to eight as you rejoin us here in the kennel. 
And Amanda, she has been really such an unbelievable scorer a lot of the season. Had that career high 24 points against Queens a couple games back. Since then, she's been a little quieter, a little more reserved. Yeah, and I think that, you know, to kind of build off of the point you made before when you talk about do you think any other players besides Maxwell and Trong will kind of have to step up offensively in this game, I think we're already seeing very, very early in this one the impact that Avon Ejim is going to have to have in order for Gonzaga to come out on top. Look at these numbers, though, averaging 16 points per game this season, eight rebounds, 53% from the floor, and this is a player who's really stepped into her role this year. No doubt. Gonzaga, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the nation, by the way. That's a good thing to know tonight is Ejim heads to the bench and she's replaced by Eliza Hollingsworth to play on the post. Speaking of free throws, Brenda Maxwell, third in the country in free throw shooting as a player. She's shooting 97% from the free throw line. Great dish by Finney. Finds Horsemeyer for a pull up J and it won't go down. San Diego off to a slow start, three for 11 shooting. Gonzaga, meanwhile, seven for 11 from the floor. Man, nearly, nearly eight. A great looking three from Maxwell and Hollingsworth can't follow either. We're playing a very fast paced game right now. I don't think offensively on either side, really they're in any sort of set offense. It's more just like run, try to score in transition with pace behind you. A lot of movement so far, yeah. but again, that's surprising because like you said a minute ago, San Diego seems really intent on forcing them to play around the perimeter. Good news for the Zags. This is a team that can shoot. Here's Callie Stokes just in off the bench and not a bad shot there. But if you notice, right, we're, we're talking about how they're forcing them to play on the perimeter. They're also forcing them late in the shot clock to try to go one-on-one -on -one against San Diego's defender. Sure, that was Jess Finney who took a couple of steps there. Referees did not whistle her, and she's got San Diego back within five points with a minute 50 to go in the first quarter, and it'll stay Zag Ball. Okay, so Kaitlyn Trong checking back in. Whatever had briefly ailed her a second ago seems to be fine. And she will come in along with, for the first time tonight, Esther Little off the bench to play on the post. To me, it's really important offensively in these moments, instead of putting the ball on the floor, forcing the defense to have to follow the pass. A pass is much quicker than a dribble. And right now, San Diego's defense are kind of just sliding with Gonzaga, not having to make these decisions that you really want a defender to have to choose between do I guard here or here. Stokes over to Little. Five to shoot for the Zags. Running down that clock. Maxwell got to put it up. Got it. Huge. I like the fact that she could have taken the three, but knowing that she had time, went for the easier bucket. But, like, she can knock down a three, too, yeah. so I don't know if that's necessarily easier for her. But probably the smarter play in that moment. Brenna Maxwell, just the most remarkable X factor this team could have dreamed of the last couple of weeks considering their injuries. All right, here comes Trong. They had a momentary two-on-one. She'll take the three, and down it goes. She had 21 against Stephen F. Austin, 22 against Stanford, 15 against UC Davis, 24 against BYU. She's automatic right now, Amanda. I think that in these moments, it really just says, like, senior to me. Mm. And in addition, experience, right? Like, you could put experience next to senior because to have the confidence – Knowing that offensively they're going to force you to try to shoot from the perimeter anyways, say, okay, guard me out here. Sure. Let me just pull up. About a two-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock, so the Zags can afford to wind this one down. But an awfully fast first quarter tonight. All right, 10 on the shot clock for Trong. Already up 10. Strong's got to get rid of it. Not a lot of space down low. And there goes a shot clock violation. San Diego will have a second or two to try to put a shot up. With her dribbling, right, it's like you need someone from the opposite side of the floor to flash. Right. You need someone to cut so that the defenders have to look away. Right now, everyone can just stare at where the basketball is. So let's see what they have in store. This is Maya Pace in her sixth year at San Diego to inbound it in. 
And that'll do it. All right, end of the first quarter. Zag's shooting continues to be red hot. Nine for 16 as a team, and they take a 10-point lead into the second quarter, mostly because of the likes of a couple star players. Brenna Maxwell at the moment, seemingly first among equals. Zags by 10 as it go to the second on the WCC Network on Stadium. Zags by 10 as you come back for the second quarter here on the WCC Network on Stadium. And, man, Callie Stokes has just gotten so much more playing time than she probably even expected Amanda the last couple of games, and she is really impressed off the bench. You know, I always think about the players that you look over the box score and maybe they don't jump out to you right away because they're not scoring the most points per game. They don't have the most rebounds or minutes. But a player that fundamentally changes how the game is played just by being on the court. And to me, that's a player like Callie Stokes, Lisa Fortier. She's spoken so highly of her, you know, coming into this season. She said that she just has something a coach loves, and it's this never quit, never discouraged mentality. And I think in these moments when you're down players, when things aren't necessarily going the exact way you want them to, having someone like that on the court is just, it's so special. No doubt, and this will be a third chance opportunity for the Zags. Strong rebounding effort here in the early going from them as well. Yeah, four offensive rebounds here in this first half already for Gonzaga. That's 14 team rebounds to San Diego's six. And after the offensive rebound, there's Hollingsworth for two more points. Sounds like we have some kind of disagreement between the referees and the San Diego coaching staff. They're really not happy about something. So let's send one of their players to the bench, Olinger, I guess. Unsure what it was that they were upset about. But, you know, if I'm San Diego, I'm really impressed, and I like what we're doing defensively. Yeah. Except not rebounding, because you're just giving Gonzaga, a, like, a way out of what you just forced them into, which is to shoot in a system that they're not necessarily comfortable playing in. No doubt. San Diego, is. this one's going back to Zag's way. You and I were saying during the break a second ago, Amanda, it looks to me like San Diego's defense is succeeding in making Gonzaga's attack look about as unsettled as they have all year. Yeah, it looks uncomfortable, and you can kind of tell. You know, when we talk about playing on the perimeter as Kaylin Trong takes a hard fall That on, was a scary little play. fall, huh? Yeah, because there was like a delay as she came down. You can see she knows she's going to fall almost. Happy to see her get up after that play, but right now Gonzaga just kind of playing out of system. I would imagine 
after halftime when they kind of have more time to reconvene and say, here is how we're going to adjust. We're going to see a little bit more offensive consistency, but huge credit to San Diego coming in with the scout. Gonzaga somehow though, even though they look uncomfortable on the offensive end, they're shooting 50% as a team, 10 for 20. And that's a foul on Laura Erickstrup for USD. Yeah, San Diego 5 of 15 shooting, which kind of tells the story of the game right now because if that was number was increased by, you know, two baskets, that cuts into that deficit. There's Yvonne Ejim, Zags now 11 for 21, and the percentage goes up. So here's Maya Pace running the offense. Talk about a veteran. It's her sixth year at San Diego. She's 10th in school history in assists, fifth in steals, and she's got two points. Yeah, and she's on pace. No pen intended. Sure. Are you sure it wasn't intended? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't mean to, Are but then sure? I'm like, it works. That's a lie. <laughs> Continue. No, she's on pace to move into that ninth spot all time on assists. You know, she's on pace with one steal tonight to move into fourth. She She's a player who is breaking records on this San Diego team. And to me, to have someone like that who's just like consistent, just reliable, it's so, so, so important. It's one thing to have a fifth COVID year. But, man, six seasons on the team. That's really something. Here's Williams. Draws the foul. Clearly an over-the-back foul as she went up there. And that's going to be on Kylie Horsmeyer, the sophomore from California. So here's Michaela Williams. She's been a huge role player so far this season. Not a huge scorer. But... Someone who just never leaves the floor, she's averaging still like 30 minutes a game. Well, right, and I think that that just kind of builds on what we were just talking about with Callie Stokes, a player who maybe, if you didn't watch the game and were just looking at the box score, doesn't jump out to you, but plays such an important role. Strong underneath. She's not even happy with that shot she put up, and Pace had the rejection there. All the way down, Pace. She'll slow it down and get it out to Finney. The University of Washington transfer. And here she is against Strong. Former Husky finding a home in the WCC. It happens now and then. Horsemeyer, bad angle on that one. And Esther Little with a good aggressive rebound. First half has just been flying by so far tonight, but so uh, neither team looks settled at all. No, it, do, it doesn't feel like either team offensively specifically is in the system that they want to be. Not yet, at least. Here's Esther Little. Zags running the shot clock again. Ejim, elbow jumper. She didn't love that shot either. That's back-to-back -back possessions where they forced up something that they pretty clearly didn't want. Let's see what San Diego can do in response. Eric Strupp back to the basket. Nice. Back down to an 11 point game. So the Zags historically have done well in this game. Mm -hmm. 12 consecutive wins over the Toreros. Been six years since USD has pulled it off. Feels like a lifetime ago in college basketball. Hollingsworth's only got five to shoot. She's got to look at the basket and put it up. Second in the WCC and three-pointers, and that's why. But you kind of saw her shake her head a little bit after that made three. Like, yes, it went in, but once again, let's not discredit the fact that San Diego, they're just taking away offensively whatever Gonzaga wants to do. So guess what? You have to put up the shot. Shot clock's winding down. Great job, but... I think we just need to see a little bit of a different offensive effort with passing. To me, it starts there. Hollingsworth and Maxwell, automatic. Zags up 30 to 16 on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Well, Eliza Hollingsworth came into this year knowing that she was going to be the primary forward for the Zags. She was out for a couple of games of sickness. They still managed to pull off wins in those games, but since she's been back, she just adds the veteran experience they need. And strangely enough, as a forward, the three-point shooting. Yeah, we just saw how successful she can be yeah. shooting the three. But to me, once again, it goes back to experience. Really a player who has played in multiple different roles, coming off the bench, moving into the starting lineup, coming back from injury, all these different things that are very relatable as a leader and, and make you feel like you can go to that person on the team and say, hey, okay, you've been through this. How can I kind of get through this as well? Yeah, so there's Veronica Sheffy with another jump shot that goes down, the freshman from the west side of the state over in Woodenville. As we approach the midway mark of the second quarter, big numbers that are jumping out to us, the Zags four for eight from three, 12 for 24 from the field, so just shooting 50% across the board. That's miraculous. Also, Doubling up San Diego on rebounds, 17 to eight. And here come the Treros back the other way. Jess Finney, the UW transfer over in the corner, clearly a fast player and trying to get something going these last few minutes. Well, and you know, if we talk about the shooting from San Diego side, 0 of 5 yeah. from three point range right now, Jess Finney a player where that is kind of her game. San Diego, not a great three point shooting team, just 25% but Jess Finney, a team high 38%. That's exactly right, so it's so funny. They've only made 35 threes as a team this year. 14 of those have come from Jess Finney. 14 have come from Kira Oakry, so do the math. That's what, only seven three-pointers right. the rest of the year have come from players who aren't Oakry and Finney, and there's Avon Egypt. It's like they're forcing them to play in this like mid-range Middle game, game. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's different than what we have seen from Gonzaga offensively, so maybe that's why it feels so out of, like, system to me. They could have been happy with that shot either from Olinger. And here's Maxwell. That's enough space for her. Can't get the three to go down. And you heard Jess Finney. Signaling, come on. She wanted the fast break as Brenna Maxwell is trying to catch up to her on the other end here. Now San Diego, a team that has some fast players. Zags, though, so strong in transition and a foul. It'll be Sheffy going to the line. It's been awfully impressive. Three for four from the field for six points. And for the Zags, Peyton Muma will check in for Kaitlyn Tronk. I think getting to the free throw line is where San Diego could be successful in this game mm. because they're struggling shooting. Eight of 23, 0 of six from three point range. What do you do when the ball's not going in? You take it straight at the bucket. Zags a team that doesn't, they don't commit that many fouls. But again, like we said a minute ago, you'd be silly to send the Zags to the free throw line very much. If you make a physical game, they will certainly get the better of you there. And here's Destiny Burton over to Maxwell. Next, dead ball should take us down into our under five media timeout here in the second quarter. Hollingsworth over to Stokes. That was a great looking play. Liza the rebound, goes back up, no. Physical down low. That's Carr yanking it away. And here come the Toreros on the move. That's Finney underneath for two. She likes to run. She's yeah. trying to get it going. I was going to say, I feel like that's what she's been looking for, you know, signaling to her team, come on, come on. We haven't seen many touches on the ball from her. I think that that's where her game is really strong in that transition. Hollingsworth to Maxwell. Boy, is that a combination we've heard a lot this year, and it's actually an offensive foul. Wave that shot off on Destiny Burton. That's three fouls for the Zags in the quarter, already three on USD. And Burton will head to the bench after the foul. Zags by 10. And here's Sheffy. Really trying to get her going off the bench. Been very impressive. Speaking of impressive off the bench, Finney's looked really good. Been an absolute spark plug. Here she goes. 
Again, trying to get it going, forcing things up. Good rebound by Carr. Triple teamed, no. And Williams the rebound. That was aggressive. Maxwell trying to force a play to start. Couldn't get what she was looking for. What can Peyton Mubadu running the point here? With five to shoot. Around Finney. Lost the handle. Off the hands of Oakry. It'll be Zag's ball for the new shot clock. All out of sorts. It's hard. You know, I was specifically watching the shot clock as the ball was moving around the three-point line. They started to feel like maybe some sort of offensive play was going to happen like under 10. Mm. It's just not enough time when they're not cutting no. or like forcing any sort of defensive decision to be made to yeah. start your offense there. So that's why we see Peyton Muma, you know, just dribbling right there at the top and almost turning over the basketball in that moment. There were only two on the shot clock after they reset it. It won't go down for Hollingsworth. That's a violation. Goes back to USD and they've cut it back to about five is the closest they've gotten to recently. But the Zags just keep making that shot when it matters to keep it around 10. Well, yeah, Gonzaga on a two and a half minute scoring drought right now. I think that this deficit looks a lot different if San Diego is not nine of 27, now nine of 28 from the floor. Exactly, they can't shoot right now. Gonzaga's defense is throttling them, especially down low. Gonzaga's just taller in the paint. But what's interesting is like they're getting the opportunities. It's not falling. If we look at you know, San Diego, they've attempted 29 shots. Gonzaga has also attempted 29 shots. So yeah. it's not like the differential there is, okay, they're up, you know, 10 points because they've attempted six or seven more shots. It's the same. You know, One it doesn't is help just really struggling. And it, it doesn't help being 0 for 7 right. from downtown. Inside a minute to go in the first half. We've been going fast tonight here in Spokane. Here's Calthani, her first good look of the game, and it's down. Another senior on this team, San Diego, a team of veterans, five out of the ten regular players that see court time, either seniors or grad students. So now a 6-0 run for San Diego, trying to build some momentum. And Brenna Maxwell nearly cut into that run, but again forced it up. This is Harsimran Carr. And San Diego wants to slow it down for one last good shot. This is Calfani out top. One second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. They can take this down as much as they want. This is Carr. Great drive by Pace. No. Second chance and good from Calfani. Clock continues to run. Do they wave the half off? Yes, they do. We are through 20 minutes of hoops. And what were you just saying? Gonzaga was by 10. And all of a sudden, here we go. It's back down to just a six-point game as we hit the halftime break. And we'll send it off to break. See you in a second for the halftime show on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Halftime in the kennel, future members of the Gonzaga Bomb Squad hip hop dance team. Meanwhile, teams in the locker room, Zags up 32 to 26 at the break. So good to see you again here at halftime. Greg Talbot and Amanda Smith with you. Amanda, the Bulldogs looked like they were really in control that whole first half, except the last couple of minutes, and all of a sudden, USD has it back within six. Yeah, I think San Diego just really forcing Gonzaga right now out of system, out of offensive rotation. They went scoreless in the final four minutes of the second quarter while San Diego went on an 8-0 run to end the half. As the kids say, it's not what you want. So let's take a look around the rest of the West Coast Conference tonight. People are watching this game, especially because of how San Diego looked against Portland. Speaking of the Portland Pilots, that is the other big game in the WCC tonight. They're taking on BYU. And look at those Pilots, man. Good for them. Up 25-17 on BYU in the second. And, like, let's just talk about the fact, right, that, yes, Portland is up against BYU, but San Diego, a team that cut it within three yeah. against Portland. So here in the second half, going to be really important for Gonzaga to come out with momentum, play their game, not what San Diego wants them to do. No doubt about it. So, by the way, here's a look at the WCC standings after this first night out a couple back. And, again, we had, as you saw a second ago, a couple games final. As of the last few minutes, we have a couple of teams in the middle, only remaining undefeated teams in the conference, St. Mary's, Gonzaga, Portland. If Portland can knock off BYU, they've got not an easy road the next couple of weeks, but at least until they play Gonzaga, they can feel like they're at least going in as the favorite most nights. Yeah, and it's incredibly interesting when you go more in depth about these games and once you start to get to those uh, competitions like P Portland versus Gonzaga, right? Like you build up in conference, you build up in non-conference to play your toughest opponents. So I think that it's just really important as you look at the conference as a whole to really dive in game by game into those box scores and what each opponent is doing. Yeah, by the way, the interesting thing, USF was 9-2 and two coming into West Coast Conference play. All of a sudden, they are already off to a 1-1 one and one start. Non-conference play does not equal conference play. Different things. Absolutely. We'll take a break here at halftime. Zags up 6 on the Toreros. We're back after this on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Starting at 5, the Zags taking on the Boilermakers in Portland at the Phil Knight Legacy event, and Drew Timmy denies the 7'4 Canadian center Zach Eady early in the game versus Purdue. At number 4, 1.3 seconds left on the clock, Callie Stokes inbounds to Kaylin Trong, who pulls up from beyond half court and splashes the 55-footer. Rolling into number three, Zags taking on Kentucky in the Spokane Arena with 12,000 plus going crazy as the hometown kid Anton Watson splits the defenders, finds some space in front of him, and brings down the hammer in front of the temporarily relocated kennel. And at number two, Yvonne Ejim, voted preseason all WCC first team, dominates going 13 for 17, dropping a career high 32 points. Seven rebounds, three steals, and a block. And at one, Zags honor a true legend in Kelly Olenek, who led the Zags to their first number one ranking and number one seed. Olenek is the first first team All-American since Adam Morrison. Kelly currently plays for the competitive Utah Jazz team in the NBA. Olenek will be the first of three Zags basketball legends that will be honored this year. Dan Dickow and Courtney Vandersloot will also be recognized this season. And you know, you know, to have your jersey, you know, that's an honor, especially, you know, beside Mo, John, and Frank. Um, it's a special, special group. And, you know, I can't thank everybody enough who had their hand in this. Once a Zag, always a Zag. Let's go, Zags. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, let's hear it for number 13, Kelly. Well, speaking of Gonzaga history, take a look at J.P. Batista. By the way, Gonzaga Game Day, you can catch on the Gonzaga Athletics YouTube channel. On this episode, the historic season of Gonzaga's cross country, also ESPN's Kendra Andrews, former Bulldog herself, talking about Zags in the NBA. Meanwhile, back in this building, Gonzaga 32, USD 26. Fun first half, Amanda, as we take a look at the highlights. Yeah, a strange first half, to be honest, because I don't feel like either side really offensively felt in rhythm. Great defense from San Diego in this one, but I think from their offensive end, having a player like Veronica Sheffy, she kind of, to me, was the catalyst behind what they were able to do when they were playing on that side of the ball. You know, this is a player who really averages 13 points a game and, and four points, or excuse me, 13 minutes and four points a game. And then on the other end, you have Gonzaga, and this is exactly what we expect them to do, is, is play from the inside. No doubt about it. So Sheffy had a great first half for USD. As for the Zags, Britta Maxwell, really impressive. Seven points. They came pretty early on, but that was balanced out by good play down low by Yvonne Ejim and Eliza Hollingsworth. Yeah, and I know that we're seeing, you know, the highlights of those plays in the paint. I wish we would have seen more of them. San Diego's defense really forcing Gonzaga to play on the perimeter. So this is where I think that they can be successful when they get the ball in that paint range and then are able to play a little inside outside basketball. No doubt about it. All right, so the Zags up 32 to 26 on San Diego. Coming up on the other side of the break, we'll take a look at our halftime stats and begin the second half of what should be a pretty interesting game because USD has been hanging around and Gonzaga keeps trying to push him back, but the Toreros are, are hell-bent on staying within striking distance like they did against Portland the other night. So we'll take a break, and we're back with the second half on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Zags 32, Toreros 26 here at the end of halftime in Spokane. Felt like the Bulldogs were really in control most of that first half, but San Diego really clawed back in the last few minutes as the Zags went on a scoring drought. And speaking of numbers, let's take a look at our halftime stats. There was a time in this first half, Amanda, where Gonzaga was doubling the shooting percentage of USD, but look how close it is now. Yeah, if we look back at the first quarter, 5 of 15 from the floor for San Diego, up to 34% in this game, but still have knocked down, not knocked down a three-point shot. That being said, they're within six. So to me, it starts on the defensive end. They're forcing Gonzaga to play out of rhythm. And look how many points for San Diego are happening off the bench. Really, Veronica Sheffy, uh, first among equals. She has been great in that regard. You know, when we talked about the fact that they have nine players playing at least 12 plus minutes 12 players in this game already with three plus minutes i think from both sides what's interesting to me is no one has scored in double figures very true so the zags back on the floor that is strong maxwell hollingsworth williams and ejim so you see kaylin strong there whatever was happening Early in the game, she got up, brought over to the bench. It looked like the trainers were looking at her elbow. Seems to be fine. Yeah, uh, kind of like a more offensively quiet first half, I would say, for Kaylin Trong. She had these, like, superstar moments to me where they needed a basket, and she went, and she was like, okay, I, I got this. That's my role. Um, but I think here in the second half, it's going to be really important for her to build on that momentum. It kind of just brings me back to the last game that you and I did together where she kind of in the second half just took over. And again, in case you weren't with us at the beginning of the game tonight, not entirely against what we were expecting, right? She was just so phenomenal against BYU. It would make sense that maybe she would take a night to run the offense as a point guard and not score 24 again. Right. Right now, though, like there's no one really on pace to put up the kinds of numbers offensively that Gonzaga's going to need to extend this lead that they have. So someone offensively is going to have to step up, and I think it starts with as there's going to be a foul called. I think it starts with forcing the defense to make a choice. And I know I keep saying it, but I want to see some more movement sure. away from the basketball. Uh, that was a foul on Ayana Calfani. Maxwell hits the deck. There will be no foul called that time on Oakery. And it won't go down from Trong. So 0 for 2 on that possession for the Zags in different ways. So San Diego trying to cut in early to this dwindling Gonzaga lead. Zags went really cold at the end of the first half. So they can do to start half number two. Not a bad jump angle that time from USD, but the shot won't go down and that'll be a foul. Maxwell hit the deck for the second time in the last minute. She's getting beat up. It'll be a second foul in the last few minutes. Ayana Calfani. Yeah, it's interesting because, like, to me, you want to come out after halftime and, and, like, I know it sounds cliche, but really kind of set a tone. And it's almost like both sides. It's felt a little out of rhythm, this game, to me. I don't know if you would agree with Completely. that. But they don't necessarily feel like they're, like, playing to their advantage. No, I would agree with you. And a strong rebound there from Williams. You and I have been saying all game that even though the Zags have been winning, they do not look locked in and they don't look in control of their own offense. I don't see any self-determination at the moment, except maybe Kaylin Trong. I like the shot. A third opportunity on the possession by Hollingsworth. No, Maxwell. This will be a fourth chance for the Zags. Hollingsworth down low and one more coming. So to me, just like a complete defensive breakdown, you've got... 10 offensive rebounds now for Gonzaga. Credit to them for never giving up on the play. But if we look at second chance points, you know, 10 offensive boards, but just four. Yeah. So d offensively, it's like they're not converting at the rate that they could be in this game. One of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. I feel like I jinx that every time I mention <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know why you got to do that. Good swat by Ejim, but it'll be a foul call. But playing with pace, you know, if you remember so many moments early on in that first half, Jess Finney kind of signaling like, come on, come on, yeah. let's go, wanting the Toreros to get out and run. So here's Calfani. She had a couple of fouls the last few minutes. 
Gets her first free throw down. When we talk about the game that they had against Portland, she was a crucial part of their success in yeah. that one. 14 points from her, 5 of 11 from the floor. So someone that in moments, right, where in that game they were down double digits and came back to cut it within three. I can't even tell you what a pleasant surprise that is for the Portland Pilots program, right? I mean, they've been good the last couple of years, and they were picked to finish second in the media poll this year as Maxwell pulls from three, gets it going for her in the second half. But, man, it's, it's just nice. For the, It's the first time in, in a couple of years that it's not just going to be Gonzaga and BYU going head-to-head -head down the stretch. Yeah, competitive, and that's, I think, as a whole, it's good for the conference. You want to play against great competition. Wow, listen to that crowd. They're really not happy. Even just think of it on the men's side in the West Coast Conference, right? I mean, not for nothing as great as the Zags are this year, but really if you ask people around the Gonzaga program for the last couple of years as Horsemeyer gets it down, kind of feels like the height of the WCC was maybe a couple of years ago when St. Mary's, Gonzaga, and BYU were all fighting head-to-head -head and ranked together. Those were the days, man. Those were the days. <laughs> and, you know, I just I have to give a shout-out to San Diego women's volleyball. Sure. Coming off of an incredible, incredible NCAA tournament run. Remarkable all season long, always in the top five. Zag fans behind the bench screaming for a travel and a layup good from Eric Strupp. Back to a five-point game. Up to Hollingsworth underneath. No foul, and this crowd is going to lose their mind. They are getting really vocally not happy here behind the bench. Ejim, no foul. Once again, though, San Diego after the play looking to push the basketball. Really good awareness from Yvonne Ejim to use her length to get in the passing lane. A little overthrown on the pass, and then, you know, you have three Torero players as opposed to... Uh, Where's where's Gonzaga? You know, I, I, it's those hustle moments to me sometimes, sure. especially in a game that's now within five. It was six at halftime. Zags looked good coming out. San Diego knows how to push their buttons, though. That was a good-looking pass from Trong, but a great step in by Eric Strupp. Strong wants to push for GU. Underneath. This will momentarily at least stay with GU. You know, we talked a lot in the first half about the fact that San Diego's defense was forcing Gonzaga to play on the perimeter, but goodness, if we think back to, you know, the last uh, three plays down for Gonzaga, they're having a hard time scoring in the paint. Yes. This is just incredible defense right now from San Diego. Really strong, especially from Carr, at least that time around, is Horstmeyer with the big body rebound. They're slowing it down, back to a five-point game, foul. Callie Stokes looking over at the ref like she doesn't just know what happened. That's on, e on Ejim, her third personal. That's not good news for them. She'll check out Esther Little in for her. So now Ejim and Hollingsworth over on the bench. If USD wants a shot to make it happen down low, these would be a good few minutes for them to do so. Yeah, absolutely. This is a time for them to really convert. To get down low, this is Olin Gur out top. The forward with a massive three, and it's a two-point game. And that's huge because we talked about the fact that San Diego, not only are they now one of nine, that was their first made three-point shot in this game, but they're just a 25% three-point shooting team. So, you know, you and I, we've talked often about the hot hand. San Diego, they've got it right now, 7-0 run for them. No foul. Maxwell had it knocked away. Here comes Horstmeyer. They have a two-on-one. Olinger, five straight points for her, and they've got a tie game here in Spokane. Had to be a timeout, a 9-0 run. Look at the San Diego bench, the coaching staff, all the momentum on their side right now. Gonzaga, they need to regroup. Wow, we got a tie game, 5-10 to go in the third quarter. San Diego took Portland down to the wire two nights back in the Child Center. 
Might they do it again tonight in the kennel? I guess we'll find out. Come on back on the WCC Network on Stadium. Well, Amanda Owinger had been awfully quiet for San Diego the first, I don't know, two and a half quarters of this game. All of a sudden, five straight points. She's got seven on the night. More importantly, she just tied this game. This is where we talk about the importance of the depth that San Diego has. Huge, huge quarter for them. A 9-0 run over the last two minutes, holding Gonzaga scoreless during that same amount of time. Listen to this crowd. The Zag fans have been screaming for the last couple of minutes about off-the-ball fouls they think they see happening on the floor. The Zags have not trailed all night. That is notable. If San Diego takes the lead next time down, that will be the first time it's happened in this game. And this will be Brenda Maxwell to inbound. They're going to call that on Hollingsworth, and here come the boos. This is when you can really start to hear and feel the frustration. And they'll take another break. Boy, it's going to get loud in here. You're going to be glad we're taking a break on the WCC Network on Stadium. Still a tie game. All right, we got a tie game in Spokane right now, and it's been partially because of the last few minutes plays like this. Take a look at the bottom of your screen. There was Callie Stokes nearly headed to the floor. She hit the deck. And then 
another questionable foul or non-foul call here. They got Eliza Hollingsworth for that one. The, the fans in here, Amanda, are just fuming. Usually the Gonzaga women's basketball fans so polite, really so positive. It is rare to hear them upset at the officials, but the last couple minutes have been really something. Yeah, this is an arena that holds 6,000, and in those kinds of moments, you really start to feel the energy of the crowd and just how many GU fans are in the building. That's Carr and a foul. This will be San Diego's first opportunity to take the lead since the opening minutes of the game. They had a 2-0 lead, and that was the last time they have led. This is an area, though, where, you know, I felt like they could be successful, was trying to get to the free throw line. Now 6 of 7 from the stripe. I, I noticed that I didn't say, like, oh, they've been perfect on free throws, and then Are you accusing missed. me of the announcer jinx again, Mandy, please? <laughs> <laughs> Continue. <laughs> but, uh, like, you can feel the momentum right now is all San Diego, I think, especially coming off such a close loss against Portland. Like, you always want a game, but, like, they want, want this yeah. one. And I think right now, Gonzaga, they just need to match that energy. They have not done it. San Diego on a 10-0 run in the last three minutes. Free to shoot. Trung's got to get rid of it. Great delay and just a bad luck on that bounce. Esther Little, strong rebound. And Maxwell might, run, might want to reset here for GU. They have not scored in four minutes. Yep. Credit to San Diego's defense. And there's Caitlin Trung just when they need her. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, we've often talked about a player like her that you can rely on as you can hear the crowd behind us getting louder and louder trying to shift that momentum back to the Bulldog side. Yeah, listen to this crowd. It's always fun when it gets like this for a women's game. Here's Carr looking for space. Didn't want to go head-to-head -head with Hollingsworth. Olinger pulls. No. And a strong rebound by the guard, Callie Stokes. And, you know, I'm a little surprised that we didn't have a foul call right there on Sheffy with Kaylin Trong. You kind of saw Trong trying to use her momentum to get that quick step against Sheffy and a little bit of arm contact there. This has been a really closely, tightly called second half specifically. No question. And Maxwell finally, in her eyes, gets the call she's been hoping for for the last few minutes. This should be... Three free throws for Brenda Maxwell as we see a whole bunch of substitutions coming in and out. Brenda, by the way, third in the country in free throw percentage. Oh, no. 97% <laughs> from the field, what are you from doing? the line. Oh, will you what stop? You will you stop? <laughs> there she goes. She's <laughs> automatic. She's automatic. <laughs> it's not real. The curse is broken. Zags by three, and she still has one more. She's 39 for 40 this year. Get out of here, man. And listen to that crowd. Zags have woken back up for the first time since the eight-minute mark in the third quarter. They lead by four. That was a strong looking jumper by the sixth year grad student, Maya Pace. Zag ball, feel that momentum starting to swing. Yeah, and you can see the focus on the faces of Gonzaga's players right now, really playing into this shift in momentum. By the way, look who's back into the game for the first time in a few minutes. Yvonne Ejim here working out top, setting a good looking screen for Kaylin Trong. And Vonnie chases down the rebound. Good to see her back in. They took her out because she's got three fouls. And that'll be a foul on San Diego on Calfani. That should be her third as well. This is what's, I feel like, tough as a defense is whatever he said. You work so hard, and then you just give up the rebound at the last second. Credit to Gonzaga for crashing the boards in this game, an area that the Toreros are usually good at. Gonzaga, 13 offensive rebounds in this one. There's Kaitlyn Trong with the free throw. Zag six for eight from the line tonight. Yeah. 
Starting to step up offensively when they need here. Only Britta Maxwell in double figures for the Zags. She's got 13, but now Kaylin Trong and Avon Ejim both have nine. What's strange is this game has been really a contest of these little runs here and there. Gonzaga now on a 7-0 run, while San Diego has gone scoreless during just about that same amount of time. Yep, 7-0 run for the Zags. Two minutes since San Diego has put down a point. A good looking dish and tipped away by Ejim. And the Zags want to run. They love to do this. Trong. Great dish. Hollingsworth fouled. It was Olinger who did it. That'll send Liza to the free throw line. It's just great awareness. And, uh, you know, we've talked so much about it, Greg, but to take over and play the point guard position and really accept it, accept the role. And in moments like that, it's like, oh wait, <laughs> you, you don't typically right. run point, right? We, I think it's important for us to remember that this is a position that she has been asked to step into. All right, so I'm glad you mentioned that, Amanda. So speaking of injuries, right? So Caitlin Trong is playing point because her sister has a foot injury. We do not know when she'll be back, but we do have an update on a couple of the other players on the Zags bench. As this one is going back to USD and Brenna not happy. We did recently learn that Maude Hybens, there she, well she's over a little further to the left of the screen. She is not back yet, but she's making her way back. But standing up, Bree Salenbein apparently has been practicing recently. That would be a huge get back for the Zags. And a big three for San Diego from Maya Pace. But getting, getting Salenbein back, what would that do for GU? Well, I think it would just take more pressure off of the other players that are being looked at right now in her absence. You know, you talked a lot heading into this year about the role that she was supposed to play. I think if that they were able to, you know, have her in the game, especially being down a few players, it just adds more consistency and, and more reliability almost to your team. So there's Hybens in the hat. And there's Bree Salenbein, has not played since February of this year with that knee injury. Highest recruited player in Gonzaga women's basketball history. They've been chomping at the bit to get her back. And Ejim hits the free throw. Back to a five point game. Zags have been making it happen by taking the lead recently, but again, I want to highlight Zags are one of nine in their last field goals. Mm -hmm. The jump shots are not going down. But they still lead by six. Sheffy, the freshman from the west side. That was a good looking shot in the putback from Casey Newbert. Where has she been tonight? I know, for a second I had to do the, the double take in the number 40. Yeah, she's wearing 40 tonight. One. We don't know, no one knows why. <laughs> but, you know, credit once again to San Diego. Like, they are sticking in this game. They are competitive. They are playing. And I think if you're Gonzaga, you can't just let Newbert, for example, grab that offensive board and go straight back up with it. That was Milosangu who came down with the rebound. And it's a foul on Esther Little. Peyton Muma on the bench was losing her mind. And this is going to be Milosangu at the line for USD. So once again, no field goals for Gonzaga in the last now three minutes. The scoring has slowed down for sure. But offensively, like this game from both sides has just fell off. We've talked about it all night long. Yeah. I think down the stretch here, it's going to be who can kind of find that steadiness and consistency within playing out of rhythm. For both teams, there is one total player who has more than 10 points. It's just Brenna Maxwell. Nobody else has more than 10. Oakry's their leading scorer this year. She's been quiet tonight and little with a good rebound. 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. It was Zags by six at halftime. Can they get it back there with one more shot at the end of the third? Trong has enough space. Out to Hollingsworth. 
Not a bad looking shot. Williams tips it away. U.S. Steel run out the clock and it'll be a four point game as we head to the fourth quarter. San Diego is really surprising a lot of people this year in the West Coast Conference. They gave Portland a run. They're certainly giving the Zags a run. We've got 10 more minutes of basketball. Come on back on the WCC Network on Stadium. Man, the San Diego Torreira has really spread it out. Nobody has more than 10 points. 12 players have been on the floor for a decent amount of time today, and they're still only down by four as we start the fourth quarter. Why is that, Amanda? I think it's such a luxury to be able to go to your bench like this, and I have just so much admiration right now for San Diego's defense. To me, they've been successful offensively and been able to continually cut into this GU deficit because they're forcing Gonzaga out of system. No foul called on Esther Little. Refs letting them play to start the fourth quarter today in Spokane. And let's talk about this Gonzaga offense as they run a set here, Amanda. Here's Yvonne Ejim rejected at the rim. And Little chases it down. Zags three for 17 from the field in the third quarter. And they still scored 15 points, which is like so interesting to me. Peyton Muma off the bench gets fouled. I think that right now, here in the fourth quarter, you know, to kind of build on the lead that you have, attacking the basket and seeing what you can do from this area of the game is going to be really crucial. Just knowing that San Diego has you not just forced Gonzaga out of offensive rhythm. They forced them to shot, try to shoot the three, which in moments they've been successful, 29% from the perimeter in this game. But I think attacking the basket and then, you know, looking to hit that playing inside, outside, passing, yeah. just, just some of the things that we know that they're so capable of doing haven't really been there in this game. And I, I think it's such a credit to San Diego's defense. Great inside out work right now by the Toreros. You mentioned Gonzaga's three point shooting. I do just want to know they started four for seven from the field, which mathematically would mean they are one for 10 in the last 10 three point shots they've taken. I know, but uh, like think of the shots that they're getting. They're not necessarily the ones that they want, they're right. late in the shot clock. True. Stokes. Not the shot she wanted, really, but she still gets it down. That was huge. And I love that energy, you know, that fight that we know that she plays with. 
That was huge. First really good looking field goal for the Zags in a couple of minutes. It's back to a six point game. Great dish from Oakry. Another good look by the freshman from Woodenville, Sheffrey, out of bounds, a Zags ball. To me, that's an interesting shot because it's not your strong point no. right now. Like you're cutting, you're cutting into this Gonzaga lead, which when you've got players who do things like that, it's hard to do if you can't convert on the offensive end. So to me, you know, knowing that you're a 25% three-point shooting team, why not? Just take a couple dribbles, force them to come pick you up, and then dish to the inside. It's been working for him in the second half, at least. Absolutely. Stokes up and under. Oh, I admire the gutsy play. Looking for a foul, didn't get it. Now, all of a sudden, USD a little bit on their heels. While Song go underneath. Foul on GU Williams in. Callie Stokes out. Feels like a crucial point in the game. San Diego even briefly had the lead a few minutes ago. And the Zags have pushed back. This is Jess Finney. She's been so good off the bench, but pretty quiet in the third quarter. Here's Newbert driving, no foul. Stay with USD. And you know what's interesting about that play when you talk about Jess Finney? How she passed the ball. You could see something develop that I don't know if her teammate did, which is she just slipped and went straight to that right corner. Mm. We know that she's a great three-point shooter, 38% from that spot. There she tries it. Man, that was a good shot, even contested. Yeah. That's going to be Zag Ball. It looked like Yvonne Ejim really muscled around in there, but they're not going to call her for what would be her fourth foul. Ejim, by the way, after that last bucket, the second player tonight into double figures. She's got 11 points. Jeffy fights through the screen. Very impressive for a freshman tonight, her play. Williams, great runner. Zags by eight. Really good last few minutes for them on the push. Here's Finney in the corner. She's at 14 threes this year. She'll drive and settle for the two and take the foul. So lucky for Yvonne Ejim, they're going to call the foul on Brenna Maxwell. Yeah, huge. Which is just huge as we, you know, I think you made a great point, are hitting this really crucial point in the game. Because it changes with her out if she did, you know, need a substitution. It changes what they not just do offensively, you know, in the paint, because I don't think that that's where they've been really strong this game. But as a defender... When you have a player like her, a defensive player, it, it does force an offense to like second guess if they should shoot there. It's a big missed free throw by the University of Washington transfer. Seven point game. Kaylin Trong, nine points. Working on facilitating the offense, but now she works on shooting. That was huge. Ten-point lead for the Zags. I mean, I love just like to the bench, to the crowd, the kiss of the fingers. All right, Bill Raftery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who's this one going to be on? Michaela Williams is verbally not happy with the refs. She's got to be careful. She's been tossed by the refs already this year. And you know what, actually, I, I like that you bring this up because it, it is a good moment to talk about, uh, sorry, I have to circle back to this because the chef's touch, Mwah. chef's kiss, come on. The little kiss. Look at that. Love it. The bench is feeling it. And this is kind of like the momentum that you need at this point in the basketball game. But, you know, when we talk about the point in which Michaela Williams did get tossed out of a game it, it, much different than what feels like yeah, this a, is a close competition. This is a close game. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a moment where you do have to be really, really smart. Second really impressive rebound by the guard, Callie Stokes. 
She's not short. She's 5'11", but I love the visible effort that she goes up with. Yeah. Williams. Back to Hollingsworth. Newbert on her heels. It'll stay with GU. And I don't know if she realized the separation that she had gotten from Jess Finney yeah. as she drove into the paint, you know, just kind of using her natural athleticism with a quick first step, kind of getting Finney off sides. Ten on the shot clock here for GU. Trong. Man, I love the effort there to try back-to-back -back threes. Wondering about the hot hand. Williams is looking for Trong, and, and Kaylin told her to try a different play, and she gets fouled. I really love watching Michaela Williams play because we talked about the fact that, you know, maybe she's not necessarily always the one who jumps out at, at you as the player of the game, but, but having her in the game, you know, she makes these really critical plays look effortless, and they're very, very difficult. Ball stays in bounds somehow. Trong, huge. 15 points. Almost all of them in the second half. You know, back-to-back -back really crucial threes for her. Taken away. Feels like the Zags are about to put this one on ice in a few minutes. Williams, yes. What a run for the Zags. San Diego was in the lead in the second half. And now it's Bulldogs by 14. And the Zags have hit four of their last five shots. Boy, oh boy, listen to that crowd in Spokane. And the Bulldogs are feeling it. Come on back for the finale on the WCC Network on Stadium. What a turnaround by Ivan Ejim and the rest of this Gonzaga team. So far in the fourth quarter, San Diego 0 for 5 from the field. Gonzaga 5 for 8 from the field. And all of a sudden, this is a 14-point lead. I, it almost feels like it's not even something that happened. It feels like a dream. I know. It's like a quick eight points yeah. for Gonzaga here late in the fourth quarter. You think about the back-to-back three-point buckets from Kaylin Trong and then getting out, pushing the basketball, scoring in transition. Like you said, four of their last five, they're out scoring San Diego 12-2 to two here in the fourth. Really something. Five minutes to go in this one. San Diego, such a valiant effort getting it against Portland two nights back. Unless they get a miracle here in the next couple of minutes, it'll be another close, valiant effort against the team picked to win the WCC this year. Great dish to Newbert. Four late points from her, but she's been quieter tonight than normal. She is their leading rebounder. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I've said it so many times, but really credit to San Diego's defense in this game for forcing Gonzaga out of what they want to do offensively. Like, that's your job when you come on the court as the opponent. But to me, this is, like, very impressive as we move closer and closer to the end of the game because these close contests 
are great experience. No doubt. Hollingsworth ended up on the floor, as did Kira Okri over on the wing for USD. So people are just getting banged around inside tonight. That'll be on Newbert for USD. And sent Hollingsworth to the line again. Zags 10 for 15 from the free throw line as a team, well below their 80 plus percent average as a squad. Tipped away by Pace, and that'll stay with GU. Heck of a game for Brenda Maxwell, 13 points. But significantly below her usual three-point efficiency. She's two for seven from beyond the arc tonight. Usually she shoots 55%. Second chance by Eric Strupp down low. And it's back to a 10 point game with four minutes to go. The so USD has cut into it a little bit the last few minutes. Well, and this is where that defensive strength that they have could really get them back into this one. Not that they're out of it by any means, but like 10 points, you think four minutes left. Uh, that's difficult, but this is a great defensive team. If they can get a couple stops here, score on the other end. Got to put it up. It's amazing that Maxwell can still get it off the rim no matter how tightly she's guarded, right? I think that's one of her strengths. I remember like the first time I ever watched her shoot at a Utah women's basketball practice. Just thinking like, I don't know if I've ever seen a release that quick. It's fast. A strong, great dish to Little. They want to eat a little time on the clock, clearly. I need to put up more points if you can wind off 30 seconds. Right, and now, you know, we kind of talked about stopping. It's a 6-0 San Diego run over the last minute and a half. It's a foul on pace. Kind of an unnecessary foul, but I guess it does stop the clock. Well, if the Zags end up pulling this one out, it's going to be a really strongly felt effort around the WCC. You watch the highlights of this one, no matter what the final score ends up being, you're going to come away thinking San Diego's got a shot when you go down to Vegas in March. Oh, 100%. You know, like the fact that this is so early on in the season, you think about that they were picked to finish sixth in the conference, and they're having these incredible showings against... You know, Portland, Gonzaga, we take another look at it here. You start to be like, hmm, yeah. I don't know. They, they could have maybe bumped up a couple spots. Well, no question about it. And the unfortunate thing about the way sports works, right, it's close on the counts and horseshoes, but San Diego's probably going to finish off this weekend 0-2 in conference play, and yet anyone who watches highlights of these last two games and come away thinking they're probably the – third or fourth best team in the league. Yeah, absolutely. Eating time off with inside three minutes to go. Oh, Maxwell broke her own ankles. <laughs> Got to get rid of it. She'll try. And a good rebound by Calfani. Her scrappiness, Calfani has impressed me tonight. Yeah, and it's like, I love the fact that San Diego, after... Gonzaga scoring, they, they, like, they've gotten out and they've looked to push, push, push right away. And to have a player like Calfani, you know, kind of stepping up and being that offensive scorer, eight points for her in this game. You know, we talked so much about the fact that Kira Oakry, she's their team's leading scorer. She's been held to two. So the offense hasn't necessarily really run through her hands, but she has still had a huge impact on this game because They've had to guard her. Sixteen points for Kaitlyn Trung. She's already played thirty minutes of this game. Rarely left the floor. Calfani again. No, Ejim, a strong rebound. She's going to finish right on the verge of a double double. Vani Ejim, eleven points, nine boards tonight. I think it's important to score on this possession. No field goals made 
for Gonzaga in the past three minutes. If they can hold on for another minute 55, it'll be fine. But again, Zags went cold late in the first half, too. Trong, great move to the rim and a great finish. And one more. She was already looking at the official like, are you going to blow the whistle? Hello. I love the fact that she put the ball on the floor, saw what the defense was giving her, quick transition move, and then not shying away from the contact down low, you know, just kind of pulling up and using that to her advantage. She had 21 against Stephen F. Austin, 22 against Stanford, 15 against Davis, 24 against BYU, 19 tonight. And isn't it interesting to think, like, there was a point in the game where I think she had, like, five points, and we were like... Like halftime, yeah. Yeah. And we're like, oh, you know, <laughs> we're going to really need to see her step up sure. just once again. Callie Stokes looks a little hurt on the floor. She's going to be whistled for that foul, though, either way it looks like. They're going to send her out to make sure she's okay physically and put Michaela Williams back in. It's like she got caught up a little bit, almost on the back of Hollingsworth. Timeout San Diego. So they think they definitely still have a shot, which they do. It's only a seven-point game, minute 35 to go. The problem for the Toreros is they put the Zags in the bonus at the free throw line. Yeah, that's a tough position to be in. But I think that this is one of those moments where, like, you do look to your strength. What is our strength? It's our defense. If they can come down, not foul, get a couple stops, and then push that pace and score on the other end, all of a sudden, ugh, they're not down seven, right? Like, I, right. Think, I, I really do think that this is a great moment for Gonzaga of, like, closing. Sure. We'll see if they can. San Diego has a pretty tall lineup out there compared yeah. to their normal one. So let's see what the Zags choose to do. Can they get out of the press? Williams trying to get it across the timeline. Eden's got to run it across, and they do. Zags by seven, minute 20 left. And They'll try to wind down the shot clock. Yeah, you're in no rush here. Around the screen from Hollingsworth. They'll run this down to the five-second mark. Ejim, huge. Nine points. The difference. That might have been it. Never know, but that was a huge shot by Ejim. She's got 13 tonight and nine rebounds. Okri. Man, that would have been a good time for one of her threes to go down. She's hit 14 this year. But a foul regardless, this is going to be one and one for their leading score. That'll be on Hollingsworth. That was a big bucket by Ejim on the other end. And if you're San Diego, you know, honestly, you had to go for the pass. Oak Ridge tries a three again, and this time it goes down. Back to six points. The Zags are just going to hold here. The question is, who do they want to foul? They'll try fouling Michaela Williams. She's not happy about that either. Let's see how she does. She's one for two from the line tonight. As Jess Finney comes back in, who has been so good at getting up the floor quickly. That's a smart sub. Especially knowing that that's their three-point shooter. Yep. Double trouble. Ice in her veins. Huge. 
Zags bounced back. They were not a good free throw shooting team early on tonight. They finished 14 for 20. That's lower than their average, but ultimately it's going to help them pull this one out. Sheffy's been so good tonight, she can be proud. So is Jess Finney for USD. Stolen away by Hollingsworth, and that should do it. They'll send Kaylin Trong to the line on the other side, and it looks like the Zags just put this one on ice. You know what was really impressive to me in this last defensive moment from moment. Gonzaga? I'm just like... I'm trying to think of my words. Sure. <laughs> it's late, okay. Is it? <laughs> I don't know what time it is. 7.45. But did, did you hear Vaughn Ejim, you know, on the defensive end, kind of being that voice yes. of the team? Like, that is such an important part of the game to me, to have that leader in a game that's close stepping up. No doubt. It's a foul as Hollingsworth got her arm hacked as she tried to pass that one away, and... She'll get a couple more free throws as the Zags get ready to put this one away. Looks like the game might end up being a double-digit win tonight for this team, but, man, it feels like San Diego, like if this were a just world, I feel like the final would be about five points. San Diego played a great game tonight. Oh, I mean, super, super impressive game. Well scouted. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to be honest, I stand by the fact that I don't think that this was Gonzaga's best offensive game played. Not even close. They did not. Like, San Diego really forced them out of whatever they wanted to do offensively. They tried to have them shoot from the perimeter, which was, like, their go-to. Then they started knocking down some shots there. But whatever they were doing, they took away. And I, I think that as San Diego continues to move farther and farther into conference play, you just continue to build that comfortability. Everyone's having a good time tonight here inside the McCarthy Athletic Center with a probable win on the way in the next 15 seconds. And a fun time here to be a Gonzaga men's basketball fan as well. I'm not sure if anyone expected what happened against Alabama back on Saturday, but what a wonderful showing from the men's team as well. Everyone happy in the kennel the last few nights. Yeah, that's that holiday joy. Sure. <laughs> that holiday joy. <laughs> San Diego, the best 0-2 team in conference play. Yeah, you know... I don't think that the final score is indicative of what they did. Not even close. Von Ejim's going to run this one out. And there it is, Gonzaga 70, San Diego 59. An 11-point win for GU, but, man, it feels like this thing was, was four or five points when it mattered most. Absolutely. You know, you look at the fourth quarter specifically, Gonzaga – Outscoring San Diego 23 to 16, but it's almost like it was this game of these runs and stoppages from both sides. Gonzaga, great job of closing when they needed to. All right, so the vast majority of this game, there was only one total player who was in double figures, and that was Brenna Maxwell. By the end of the game, the Zags have four players with more than 10 points leading the way. Kalen Trong with 20. Just another casual night from Kaylin Trong. You think of the game she had against BYU, a career high 24, 20 in this one, 15 in the second half from her. To me, having a player like that that can just step up when you need it offensively is so, so crucial. We saw how important it was in closing this one out. Huge. Eliza Hollingsworth had 10, Trong had 20, Von Ejim had 13 and 9, and Brenna Maxwell had 13 as well. Michaela Williams also had nine points to finish it off tonight. So well spread around. We kind of thought it might not be Trong who did the majority of the damage, but it ended up being that way for the second straight night. It's so interesting looking over the numbers. To me, the ones that stand out from San Diego's side, 25 bench points out shooting. Can you believe that? Gonzaga, 39% as opposed to Gonzaga's 37%. I just... 
I think that what it really came down to was the fourth quarter when Kaylin Trong kind of took over. Avon Ejim kind of had that energy. You know, these experienced players on the team. Like, I, I just think that closing a game is like, it says who you are. So the fact that this is the final score, it's almost confusing. <laughs> It is. <laughs> this, this, is a, this was a confusing game, top to bottom. It was all. It was all. It was all weird. It was a weird game. So, what's coming up next for GU? We kind of were done. It felt like with non-conference play when they took on UC Davis, but they did have this one little last game thrown in right before Christmas. They take on the Montana Grizzlies. Uh, this, that game will be on SWX in the Spokane and Montana area. You can, of course, also catch it here online on the WCC Network. After that. Christmas, come back from Christmas. We are really into the full meat of the WCC schedule. Pepperdine, LMU on the road, then back the weekend of January 5th and 7th for San Francisco and Santa Clara. There is a chance there's one more non-conference game thrown in there if they can reschedule that earlier canceled game against Eastern Washington. Who knows at that point? But either way, you know, here we are right into the lion's den. And I don't know, honestly, at this point, if you do reschedule, just based on what you're missing, like being down players. Right. Ugh. I go back and forth with like, yes, it would be good for experience, but is that the move you want to make? We'll end up seeing, but super, super impressive win. Once again, not having their full roster. Boy, what a fun one this was tonight. Four Zags in double figures, and all of a sudden after a, what felt like a close call against the Toreros tonight, they sit atop the WCC with a 2-0 record and there they are in first place with a 70 to 59 win. For the great Amanda Smith and the rest of our WCC network crew here on Stadium, I'm Greg Talbot saying thank you so much for joining us. We will see you as they take on Montana on the 25th, 21st.